You already know what it is. It's your boy Lay back with another reaction, another review, another episode. A hey, true crime. You up to bat. Bah. It's your boy Lay back. Welcome back to my channel. Hey, two things we gotta do. You gotta hit that subscribe button. I'm drinking this water, man. You already know what it is. Elevate more in 2024. Elevate more in 2024. We back with another reaction. It's your boy laid back. Make sure you hit the like button, the notification bell, the subscribe button, all that. We got a killer realizes their victim is still alive. Oh, hell no. Let's go ahead and get into it. Fire Squad, what's popping? Let's get it. Do you know what happened to Adriana tonight? No, I don't. She hmm. talked to us. She said that you and Heather did this to her. So that's why we're talking to you two. This is the moment Tina realized her murder victim was still alive. Ooh. And to make things worse, her victim had just told the cops everything they needed to know to put her behind bars for the rest of her life. Look at her face. We know what happened out there. It's just going to be a matter of getting fingerprints and evidence back. I'm going to do it. I promise to go. Tina is currently being interrogated over the horrific attack of her friend in Florida. Like mm. most teenage fights, it apparently started because teenage. of a dispute over a guy but this isn't the story that she and two other suspects would tell investigators in this extremely sick case mm. okay tina you know can i call you tina mm -hmm. okay obviously know something's up so tell me what she happened tripping. tonight nothing happened that i know of heather just said that something about adriana got beat up real bad okay you don't know anything about that no I see your arms and hands if i could okay and what's this right here that little scratch there this? Yeah. I have a puppy. Okay, and your puppy calls that? Look, I'm gonna move here. Got your chin? Okay. 19 year old Adriana had 19. gone over to her neighbor's house to patch things up after an argument, but she had no idea that fate was waiting for her. That neighbor was Tina Brown, and Adriana was walking straight into a trap. What started off as a fight quickly turned into something much worse, but according to Tina, she's got an alibi. So, where were you tonight? At Heather's. At Heather's house? Heather said she was going to cook, so I went down there. She was cooking uh, fish and french fries, and then we just started watching movies. You were there all mm -hmm. night until the cops came up there? Mm-hmm. What time did you go over there? Um, probably just started getting dark. Okay, so about about sunset. What, she look like she's stressing out, and she 19. All this over a guy? Let's listen to the story, though. Was anybody over at Heather's house when you went over there? Just Heather and her husband. Heather, okay. Did anybody else come over there? Mm, her and her little friend girls were at the house. She said she hurt her hand, so usually we get there and everything is all right, so I don't end up going with her, but she said she was going to the emergency room. What time was that when they came by, you know? Mm -mm. Was it long after you got there? No. Okay, so early in the evening? Um. I don't know what time it was. Oh, okay. Um, so about 30 to 45 minutes after sunset. Tina's daughter, Brittany, was also at Heather's house at the time, but the problem here was that they, along with Tina, were the three main suspects in the case. The detective already knows there's bad blood between Tina and Adriana and mm. spent some time discussing their friendship. What has been going on between you and Adriana this week? Mm. Actually, um, mm -hmm. Adriana, we, me and Adriana were together today. Okay. Where were y'all together? At my house. Okay. What was going on there? We were just sitting there watching movies, trying to get my computer, um, pull it up where I can get iTunes and watch movies. Um, have y'all had any problems? Oh, yeah. We've had problems. The first three trailers, we've had problems for a long time. What's recently. the problems? Well, lately, the new problem is she thinks that I'm the one who had her boyfriend locked up in jail. Okay, so she's mad at you thinking her boyfriend's locked up because of you. Yeah, but we talked about it earlier today. This would be one of several accusations that surrounded the four women. Tina's daughter Brittany also claimed Adriana slept with her boyfriend. But even so, Tina says there were no issues over the last few days. Me and her actually just started back talking today. Okay. Because I asked her um, this morning, what was I doing this morning? I was trying to make some phone calls. 
and I wanted to heat up some chicken. So I asked her, would she put the church's chicken in her microwave? And she heated it up for me and brought it to my house. Okay. Do you know what happened to Adriana tonight? No, I don't. Heather just said she got beat up, but that's all I know. A little bit more than that. Mm. The detective is talking about the horrifying injuries covering Adriana's body. And what? despite her story, Tina knows exactly what happened. Tina, Brittany, and Heather waited for Adriana to arrive at Tina's house in Inslee before ambushing her with a taser and beating her down with a crowbar. The three whoa, whoa, they tased her and beat her down with a crowbar. Whoa. He then threw her in the trunk of a car and drove her to a secluded patch of woodland where what? they set her on fire and then walked away. Clearly, what? the ex They set her on fire and walked away? How in the hell did she survive? Bend. Tina, Brittany, and Heather waited for Adriana to arrive at Tina's house what? in Inslee before ambushing her with a taser and beating her down with a crowbar. Damn. The three then threw her in the trunk of a car and drove her to a secluded patch of woodland where they set her on fire and then walked away. Clearly, what? they expected her to be dead. But Adriana not only survived this horrific attack, but managed to crawl to a nearby house oh and find goodness. help. She did this with burns covering over 60% of her body. None of the suspects, including Tina, know that she survived. Wow. Until the detective drops this bombshell. We're not sure if she's gonna make it or not. No, I don't. Does she talked to us, or is she talked to the people that came Ooh. over to help her? Mm -hmm. Did you see her move, like, Oh shit. Did this with burns covering over 60% of her body. None of the suspects including Tina know that she survived until the detective drops this bombshell. We're not sure if she's going to make it or not. No, I don't. She talked to us or is she talked to the people that came over to help her. Mm -hmm. She told them something. You know what she told them? I can just imagine what I said. Mm. She said that you and Heather did this to her. So mm. that's why we're talking to you too. Mm. But she said I called. She's been saying a lot of stuff lately. Okay. She said I called. Um, mm. Cause this is all stuff that we talked about today at my house. Okay. About um, my tire was stabbed. Okay. And I asked her if she do it. She said no. I mean I couldn't prove she did it. So we I ain't argue about it, fuss about it or nothing. But you thought she did it. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's just because of what people said. But. Mm -hmm. Did you hear about her window awful. getting busted out? Whose window? Adriana's window getting busted out a few days ago. You didn't hear about it? No, sir, I didn't. And you said tonight you were over at Heather and Darren's, right? Yes, sir. And you didn't go anywhere? No. Did anybody come over there while you were there? Um, he had somebody come over, but I didn't go out. What, who were they that came over? The, the, he was dark-skinned and he had braids. Okay. And then there was another guy, but I didn't know who that guy was. Blocker over. sound familiar? Yeah. And did anybody else come over? Mm, yep. Yeah, um, white guy in a red truck. You know who that was? No, he went out there and went outside and talked to him. And what was Darren doing while y'all over there cooking? Anything? Laying on the couch watching movies. Is that pretty much what y'all were doing all the way until the cops came? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you, Darren, and Tina were sitting in the living Heather. room. Heather. Heather were sitting there in the, in the living room watching movies. Mm -hmm. And when the cops knocked on the door, what'd y'all do? We were sitting there. Okay. Mm. Why you answer the door? It ain't my door. Mm. Okay. So y'all sat there, and when the cops came, they didn't answer the door. And how long were y'all in there before you did we answer the that, door? We um, thought that, I guess the, the tape was going out, because Adriana has a little boy that's kind of hyper. He mm -hmm. said that that little boy probably got that taser and tased that little girl. Mm. All right, but you were home all night. You didn't see any kind of disturbance going on over there before the cops came over there or anything. No, we would have heard something. Right now, Tina is starting to show signs of guilt. She's slumped over with her head hung down and avoiding eye contact, indicating she's very ashamed and regretful. Mm. Or at the very least, sorry she's been caught. Whatever the case may be, she definitely seems uncomfortable. But as the detective points out, it's definitely not for the right reasons. Did you didn't go to go get anything or go anywhere at all? Mm, I don't think so. Um, mm -mm. Okay. You seem kind of lackadaisical about this. I'm, I'm telling you that this woman is uh, probably going to die mm. and has named you as the person that's harmed her. It kind of, you know, 
doesn't sit easy with me that you're just so nonchalant about this. I just I just talked to talk to her today and I told her I never called DCFS on no kids. Okay. Mm. Well, she's probably going to die. Is the word we're getting, and we're concerned over that. And the last person she said that did this to her is you and Heather. Okay. We're going to go out there. We know what happened out there. It's just going to be a matter of getting fingerprints and evidence back, okay? Damn. Once again, Tina shows her guilt, this time by touching her lips. This is often a telltale sign someone is lying and is trying to hide that fact by covering their mouth. The reason we're here. Basically, what she told the fireman was that you two came the and fireman. grabbed her. Mm-hmm. We'll say what now. What she told the fireman was that you two came over and grabbed her, pulled her out of that house, beat her and harmed her and nobody out there the kids or nobody saw none of this nobody saw it we talked Lady to everybody in that doors, neighborhood kids are always outside we've talked to everybody in the neighborhood and you saw them all out there nothing nope mm. Mm. and she's saying that y'all did it and we're sitting here talking to you and then i i'd certainly appreciate and i know tom appreciates that you're talking to us but we got to get to the bottom of this and we got to know what happened the truth and there are two choices here Either you're going to tell us or Heather's going to tell us. So, mm. who's going to be? I didn't do anything to her. Okay. Well, was the and you were home all night. I was at Heather's house. You were at Heather's all night. Never left there. Because, see, the story between Heather and Darren is already shaky. <laughs> and your story is a third version of what they've told us so far. This is a serious allegation. I mean, this is life-changing. And somebody's life may end over this. 19. We're getting told that she's in pretty critical condition at this point and not likely to make it. When Adriana was found, she reportedly told her rescuers that Tina had never expected her to make it out of the woods, let wow. alone make it to safety. But mm. despite her brave fight, Adriana died from her ordeal 16 Jeez. days after her rescue. I mean, Damn. she was just why at my house Adrienne? today why she didn't tell me. I've been blamed for a lot. Well, it's it's, it's a, circ, a cycle over there. It goes trailer Damn. one, trailer two, trailer well, three, Well, she didn't do it four. to herself. Somebody did it to her. Adriana been riding that bike all day today. Okay. But somebody did it to her. I didn't. Okay. I swear I but didn't. But she's saying you did it. I didn't. Adriana been saying I didn't. I it did may be the last stuff. thing she tells somebody. Hmm. You know? Tina, Heather, and Brittany were all found guilty of murder, with wow. Tina believed to be the ringleader. Had Adriana not made it that day, these three killers could have escaped justice. Damn. But now Tina sits on death row, waiting for her day of execution. Whoa. Detectives often know exactly who the killers are right from the start, they just need to prove it. But sometimes, things are different. Like in the- Damn. Death row, 19 years old. All over some- Allegedly a guy? Oh my god. This case, where the detectives realize they got things completely backwards, and their main suspect ends up revealing the shocking truth in the hunt for a missing girl. Do you suspect Sam in any of this? The guy that, you know, was interested in her, and, you know, some other guys that were interested in her, but they found out she had a boyfriend, you know, they're just... They're friends now. I really couldn't see him. One afternoon in April 2006, 17-year-old Ashley left her home in Illinois with her boyfriend for an interview and a basketball game, saying she'd be back before 10.30. Ashley didn't return that night. Mm. Her terrified parents called the police, who found her boyfriend's vehicle abandoned with two outfits, one for the interview and one for the game. Adding up all mm. the evidence, her boyfriend Jeremy was now the prime suspect and was taken in for questioning. Damn. Has she been through any kind of trouble or trying times recently or anything like that? Not recently. A while back we had an abortion though. And How long was that? Um, probably December. Okay. Is, well, no, it was a little bit before December. How, how did she take that? She was alright. I mean it wasn't like horrible, like about a depression or anything, you know. It was, she's fine and she's a lot better now. Yeah. How often do you see her? Once a day. Usually, and then on Tuesday nights we don't see each other because I got a designated party night with my buddies. So other than that, it's usually once a day. Once a day. So I mean, you guys are pretty serious. And yeah. It's yeah. Been going out for how long now? Almost two years. It'll be two years in July. Mm -hmm. What if somebody came up and said that you know that she had uh, some marijuana in her room? I'd be real surprised. Okay. I'd be and real because she tells me everything. What about uh, possibly owing 
somebody in Cahokia some money for drugs. What about that? Whoa. I'd be really surprised. <laughs> Do you know the name Mike? Does that name sound familiar? No. Maybe that's not familiar. Mm -mm. A name comes up during the questioning that Jeremy has never heard before, and his reaction to hearing the new name is noticeable. This would be one of many men in Ashley's life that he doesn't know about, but mm. there's one that remains familiar to Jeremy. 27-year-old Sam. Do you suspect anything between Sam and Ashley? No. I, I, I couldn't see it. I mean, I just... I trust them both too much. I mean, I trust her so much more than him, you know, because it's my girlfriend. I, I, he, I don't think he would ever do anything to harm her, you know. It's just, it doesn't seem like it's his nature. Well, what about if, uh, you know, possibly not even harming, but what about uh, if they were to, you know, if they, if they were an item or something like that? Would you suspect that at all? No. Mm. No. The fight that you had Tuesday night, you were telling me that you guys had a little argument. What was that about? It was because apparently I, I yelled at her or something and she didn't like it. And then she gave me all my stuff back with what she had and said, you know, I want to break up with you. And I said, no, I, no, we talked it over and stuff. And, you know, that it was just all just, I don't know, just stress because that's when she thought that she might be pregnant and Tuesday night again. Yeah. Mm. And and she turns out she wasn't and that was the stress of that doing that and you know. Do you know any friends that she might be with that uh, that you know that good friends that she would hang out with that she would go crazy. to their house or anything like that? I can't see the ones that she would their parents letting it happen and not letting her parents know. I there's no way that if she went to Brittany's house there's no way her Brittany's parents would, you know, not tell Ashley's parents or Christy's house. There's no way Christy's parents would not tell Ashley's parents, you know. Who does she normally hang out with like there at, the, at school? Christy and some other girls. I, I don't know their names because I've I never really met them outside of school, uh -huh. but I, she's played basketball with, I think, a couple of them that I haven't met and I, I don't know their names, but other than that, just Christy's like the main one. When Jeremy said Ashley went out of town to play basketball, the detectives wondered what it was that made her travel so far when there were basketball courts nearer her home. Mm. It turns out that the reason was Sam, and Jeremy was completely clueless about anything going on between them. Wow. Suddenly, police have a brand new suspect. Uh, how long have you known Sam? Uh, I was probably sophomore in high school, I want to say. When you met him, he was a teacher? He, I, I'm pretty sure he was a teacher over in St. Louis. I think he was doing something something with kids. And then he was also doing wrestling stuff. He plays a lot of sports. So. No, does he? Yeah. What's he like? What's he? He's just your all-around average, you know, guy. I mean, loves the party and, you know, loves to teach. That's, that's like his main goal. But That's his home? He's just average. I mean, there's nothing special, unique about him. Just easygoing guy. But uh, as far as like uh, physical abuse at the house, no. have you ever seen anything like that? Have you ever seen any marks on her or anything like that? No. Bruises or anything? Has she called you up and told you anything like that? Or No. Okay. I know she runs into walls a lot, like literally. I mean, she's got kind of, I've seen her do it. Not like, you know, she says that she runs into walls, but I've seen her because I don't know if you want to call it, she's blonde or whatever, but. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not like a lot. continuous thing. I've just seen her do it a couple of times, but that what's would, her mom like? Her mom? Mm -hmm. She's she's real nice. I mean, she's raising two girls and you know dealing with Mike. But <laughs> what, what's he like? What's he? he he's good. He, I mean, he's a good dad. I mean, he loves them both. Both those kids to death. After pressing him for nearly an hour, it slowly became clear to detectives that Jeremy had nothing to do with his girlfriend's disappearance but he had given them vital information about her 27-year-old basketball friend. Sam was a teacher at a rival school, and his number was found in Ashley's phone. It turns out they made an awful lot of phone calls to each other, so this time he was brought in for questioning. In a story we've all heard before, Sam started out by claiming their relationship was friendship and nothing more. Well, I'd give her like a hug goodbye. How would you do that? I, that's not sexual, is it? You give someone a hug goodbye. I think she kind of started becoming obsessed with me. Because like I said, she was calling me not like literally not stop the time. But after being confronted with the testimony of Ashley's friends, he changed his story. Well, I will say this, you never kiss. You, you 
never kissed. Yes, we did have sex in the back of the vehicle there. And after that day, I felt absolutely terrible about that. Sam changed his story several times during the course of the questioning, and it was becoming clear to detectives he knew more than he was saying about Ashley's disappearance. The detective needs to break down the barrier that Sam has created, and in order to do that, they try to guilt him into a confession. They're going to use his most loved family members against him as a way of making him crumble. Your grandma's not here. I know. Your mom's not here. But you know what? In a way, they are. Because everything they taught you, all the talks grandma had with you, are within you. Hmm. All of them are. And unfortunately, right now, Sam, he ain't telling us the truth. Can I go show you what happened? Please. She's still out there, Sam. Mm. She is. See. And where's it at? I have to show you. Said, it took these you. detectives an agonizing 12 hours to crack Sam, but he finally admitted to being responsible for Ashley's disappearance. Damn. He told police that he got Ashley in a chokehold during the argument and heard her neck snap. He decided to make it look like she had been strangled, so he choked her again, and she became lifeless when he left the scene. Sam thought after 30 hours she would be long dead, and he was taking the police to find her body. But by some miracle, Ashley was found barely alive. What? It took her weeks to wake up from the coma she had slipped into, and even longer to heal the psychological wounds. Damn. But she was able to testify against Sam and live to see him sentenced to 20 years for her attempted murder. If you enjoy true crime videos like this, make sure you're subscribed to see more. Whoa. What? So, the first girl got the death penalty and he I guess because she didn't die he got 20 that was craziness that was pure insanity the first one over a, a guy and you beat her and stun her with a stun gun set her on fire and just leave her the second one, you strangle her. You heard some. You heard her neck snap. You strangled her, and then you left her. Then hours later, the police come, and she's still alive. <sighs> this stuff is crazy, man. This stuff is crazy. Take care of yourself, man. Till next time, self love and positivity. Fire squad, I got you, and you know it. Whoa.